Hi, my name is Eileen. I'm a research scientist from the Centre for Research in Child Development at NIE. Recently, we published um, findings from SKIP Singapore Kindergarten Impact Project, where we followed children from, from preschool all the way up to the first year of primary school. So one of the key findings from that study was that children who have parents who spend more time at home engaging in um, home-based math or language games enter kindergarten with um, better math and language skills. We also found that children who do enter kindergarten with better skills in math and language also continue to do better over the kindergarten years and up to primary one. So the basic idea is to have children to draw a map of let's say their own bedroom or if they are um, if they feel particularly um, excited then they might want to draw a map of their entire house so using a piece of paper like this um, and then using some markers so the aim of this um, activity is to get children to um, explore spatial relations between different objects and being, being able to visualize what their room looks like and how they can transfer it into a two-dimensional drawing uh, of a map So it's, a, it's an activity that we, parents can do with their children at home with just um, a basin of water, something like this. And to find different objects at home, which are of different weights, different sizes. So I have some examples here. So what we want to do with the children is to first ask them to guess which object might float and which object would sink when we put them in the water. So for example, we ask them to predict, okay, so what do you think about this one? Do you think it will float or whether it will sink? And then once the child has made a guess, then we can try putting it in the water and see what happens. And then we see, oh, this one would sink, whereas the others float. Then we can talk about um, asking the child to say, hmm, why do you think the marble sinks, whereas something big like this would float? Then we see what they will say, and then we start to explore from there. So the idea here is to help children to explore what happens when you put something like a marble into um, small little jars of water. So you can prepare two jars of water here with different heights of water. So this one has a little less and this one has more. So we can start the activity by asking children to put marbles into the first jar and they can start counting how many marbles they need to put in order to have the water overflow. So let's say we, con we continue this activity and we find that we need 10 marbles to make the water in this jar overflow. Okay, so let's ask our child to go on to this next jar of, of, of water. So this jar you can ask the child, hmm, do you think that there are there is more water here or less than the previous jar? And then the child might say, hmm, this one has more. Okay, so ask the child to predict whether you will need more or less than 10 marbles in order to make the water in this jar overflow. So again, it's about having conversations with your child. This is called, what is the difference between these, basically what we're trying to get them is to appreciate the geometrical concepts that's around them. Now, what we want them to do is to actually explore these containers. Look at this tissue box and look at this uh, food container. What's the difference? This thing actually moves when I push. You know, kids love to push and move them. Oh, this also moves when I push. But there's something else is happening when I push this. It starts moves on its own, it rolls, not just slide. And this is where we get students to be more sensitized towards the kind of surface that a container may have. So the child starts to observe geometrical objects with the mathematics in mind. Let's take a look at this. This is a cube. How many faces do you have here for this particular cube? Oh. Dad, I think I counted and there are six faces. Very good. And what shapes are these faces? They are squares. Ah, look at this. This is a cutout with six squares. Can I fold it and make it into a cube like this? And the child will start to fold 
and tape it down and find that, oh, I can form a cube. Very good. Can it be arranged in another way? Does that mean that every time when I've got six squares, I will be able to make a cube? Let's try with this pink one. Let the child struggle a little bit because you'll find that no matter how the child does it, you can't really form a cube with this configuration of six squares. Now, this is the concept of a net and this is how we make boxes and get the students to appreciate that once you know what are the faces that make up a box, you can actually make a net of that box. But be careful, there are certain configuration where even the faces put together, you can form the box. So in this way, you find that you can actually engage the child at a very young age with objects around them about geometrical shapes and even extend it to the whole idea of nets of a solid and whereby they appreciate that there are those which are not nets of a given solid. I think for young kids, they are very, very, very comfortable with counting within 10. And when it's beyond 10, uh, very often parents tend to make students or children recite the numbers. So for example, after 10, 11, 12, and you find that most kids actually try to memorize. And they treat it as a song. And this is where I think there's a beauty in our counting numbers. And this is where we count in blocks of 10 to make things easier. Let's get the kids to count many blocks. Okay, how many blocks are there all together? And you find that most kids will start counting one, two, three, and they'll continue counting until they reach. I have actually 24 blocks here. Oh, 24, I see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I make it connected together, 10 of them. One ten, one ten, one ten. And I start counting again, I make another ten. And then I have got four little ones. So how many do I have now? It's easy because 10, 20, and then I've got 21, 22, 23, 24. Isn't that faster? I think one of the tendency for parents to believe about mathematics is that it is a subject with a set of rules to be remembered and reproduced. Uh, but I think uh, if you look at mathematics itself, you realize there's actually a lot of opportunities uh, for students to be creative and curious. But what is crucial is encourage our kids to feel comfortable to ask questions because I think questions are the ones that lead our child to start understanding and be more sensitized towards the environment around them and look at how mathematics can help them to answer the question that they have. Yeah.